I've had a couple of requests to show how to compute marginal rate of substitution by way of an example. I'm going to build on some of the uh, ideas that I put forth in Lecture 6a. But in this video, I'm going to do an example to supplement that. Now, here we have an indifference curve. It's the utility equal 1 indifference curve. And we're going to be working with a Cobb-Douglas utility function, x to the 0.6 times y to the 0.4. One of the points on this u equal 1 indifference curve is y equal 1 and x equal 1. You can see that if you plug in x equal 1 and y equal 1 into the utility function. We have 1 plugged in for x, we have 1 plugged in for y, and we get 1. That's utility of 1. Of course, there are a whole bunch of other points that satisfy this, this equation as well, where utility equals 1. And we could express all of those points by just setting this utility function equal to 1. Now what you can see is that when we set 1 equal to the utility function, this describes a relationship between x and y. Let's work with that relationship a little bit to get it in terms of y equals x form. So here I just rewrote what this equation is. I multiply both sides by x to the negative 0.6. That goes ahead and cancels this x to the 0.6. And now we can just take both sides to 1 over the 0.4. When we take both sides to 1 over the 0.4, we get negative 0.6 times 1 over 0 0.4. 0 0.6 over 0.4 is 1.5. And we get that y equals x to the negative 1.5. And that's the indifference curve here. We get this exact indifference curve by plotting the function y equals x to the negative uh, x to the negative 1.5. And now we could ask ourselves what is the slope at any point along this indifference curve? And the simple way to do this, once we have this expression for the indifference curve, is we can take the derivative of the indifference curve with respect to x. This is just using the power rule. So we bring the exponent down and we subtract 1 from the exponent. So we have an expression for the slope at any point along this indifference curve. In particular, if we wanted to know the slope right here at the point y equal 1, x equal 1, we could plug in x equal 1 and we'll get that the slope is negative 1.5. Because 1 to the negative 2.5 is just 1. In the last video I showed how th that slope of an indifference curve at any given point was related to the marginal utilities. And that turned out to be a really fast shortcut to figure out what the slope is. And so let's go ahead and see that and how that gives us the same answer. Now remember from the last video that we can compute the marginal rate of substitution merely by taking the ratio of marginal utilities. And remember the marginal rate of substitution is the negative of the slope of the indifference curve. And so we can figure out, uh, we can figure out the slope of the indifference curve at any point in this plane, not just at utility equal 1, by using this formula. Remember that marginal utilities are the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to that argument. And so if we look at the marginal utility of x, we would take the partial derivative of this utility function with respect to x. So marginal utility of x by just the power rule equals 0.6 times x to the minus 0.4, y to the 0.4. We could rewrite this because this is x to the minus 0.4. I could go 1 over x to the 0.4 using a little bit of exponent magic. And now that we have the same exponents here, we can group the terms. We see that the marginal utility of x is 0.6 times y over x to the 0.4. So let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit. Similarly, we can compute the marginal utility of y. We're going to use the power rule again. Now what we end up getting is we can, we can group terms again in the same way. So what we have is marginal utility of y 
is 0.4 to the x over y to the 0.6. Okay. So now we figured out the marginal utility of x, the marginal utility of y, and we can take the ratio to get the slope of the indifference curve at any point in the plane, not just on the indifference curve u equal 1. There's marginal utility of x in the numerator, and in the denominator we'll put marginal utility of y. And we can simplify the 0.6 over 0.4 to be 1.5. We can do some inverting and multiplying. We get 1.5 times y over x is our marginal rate of substitution. Often in economics we'll be interested in marginal rate of substitution on different indifference curves because we just need to do this amount of work to get the marginal rate of substitution for any point in the plane. Now if I want to know the marginal rate of substitution for any y and any x bundle in this plane, I can just plug into this equation here, and that's going to give me the marginal rate of substitution. In particular, I could plug in 1 and 1. My marginal rate of substitution is 1.5. And remember, the marginal rate of substitution is the negative slope. That is the negative of the slope that we figured out by figuring out what the equation of that indifference curve was for, uh, for the u equal 1 indifference curve. And so you can see that there is an equivalence between these two methods of figuring out the slope of an indifference curve. One is going to use the marginal utility of x and the marginal utility of y to figure out the slope of the, any indifference curve in the plane, no matter which bundle you're talking about. The other one will only do it for the indifference curve that you singled out. Economics, however, gives us a nice shortcut, a way to figure out the marginal rate of substitution at any point in the plane, and we exploit that a lot when we use the utility function to do economic analysis of consumer behavior.